What's up my beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ? Guys, we're back for another new video today. This is going to be episode 27 of The Message. We're going to be looking at Exodus chapters 28, 29, and 30. Um, my name is Rex. Jesus Christ saved me from an awful life of addiction and darkness and... That's what drives me to put in the work on this channel for us to all grow together as believers. Um, let's get into some prayer. We'll jump into what I have to share today. I am going to take my hat off for prayer, but don't laugh at this hair. I am due for a fade, something bad, friends. Let's get into some prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for the glorious gift of rebirth and the chance to live anew in service to you, Father God. We ask that this video today be one that nourishes us, Lord, that we're able to be driven into your scriptures on our own time to truly study out these verses, Father God. Help us to be absorbent to your word. Help us to be repellent of the world and the things of the world. We want to ask that this video be able to call out to anyone not yet at the foot of the cross and anyone backslidden from their place at the foot of the cross. Lord Jesus, we pray for a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. We just ask that you continue to give us the strength and the bravery and the certainty to lift up your holy name in all that we do and to those that we encounter, Father God. Let us never grow tired of sharing the beauty and power of the gospel message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray all of this in the glorious, merciful, gracious, and saving name of your Son and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, in your holy and eternal name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. I'm covering this mess back up right now. Let's get into this. Exodus chapter 28. <clears throat> Get your brother Aaron and his sons from among the Israelites to serve me as priest. Aaron and his sons, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Itamar, make sacred vestments for your brother Aaron to symbolize glory and beauty. Consult with the skilled craftsmen, those whom I have gifted in this work, and arrange for them to make Aaron's vestments, to set him apart as holy, to act as priest for me. These are the articles of clothing they are to make, breastpiece, ephod, robe, woven tunic, turban, sash. They are making holy vestments for your brother Aaron and his sons as they work as priests for me. They will need gold, blue, purple, and scarlet material, and fine linen. Have the ephod made from gold, blue, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen by a skilled craftsman. Give it two shoulder pieces at two of the corners so it can be fastened. The decorated band on it is to be just like it and of one piece with it made of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet material, and of fine twisted linen. Next, take two onyx stones and engrave the names of the sons of Israel on them in the order of their birth. Six names on one stone and the remaining six on the other. Engrave the names of the sons of Israel on the two stones the way a jeweler engraves a seal. Then, mount the stones in settings of filigreed gold. Fasten the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. They are memorial stones for the Israelites. Aaron will wear these names on his shoulders as a memorial before God. Make the settings of gold filigree. Make two chains of pure gold and braid them like cords. Then attach the corded chains to the settings. Now, make a breastpiece of judgment using skilled craftsmen. The same is with the ephod. Use gold, blue, purple, and scarlet material and fine twisted linen. Make it nine inches square and fold it double. Mount four rows of precious gemstones on it. First row, carnelian, topaz, emerald. Second row. Ruby, sapphire, crystal. Third row, jacinth, agate, amethyst. Fourth row, beryl, onyx, jasper. Set them in gold filigree. The twelve stones correspond to the names of the Israelites with twelve names engraved, one on each, as on a seal for the twelve tribes. 
Then make braided chains of pure gold for the breastpiece like cords. Make two rings of gold for the breastpiece and fasten them to the two ends. Fasten the two golden cords to the rings at the end of the breastpiece, then fasten the other ends of the two cords to the two settings of filigree, attaching them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod in front. Then make two rings of gold and fasten them to the two ends of the breastpiece on its inside edge facing the ephod. Then make two more rings of gold and fasten them in front of the ephod, ephod to the lower part of the two shoulder pieces near the seam above the decorated band. Fasten the breast piece in place by running a cord of blue through its rings to the rings of the ephod so that it rests secure on the decorated band of the ephod and won't come loose. Aaron will regularly carry the names of the sons of Israel on the breast piece of judgment over his heart as he enters the sanctuary into the presence of God for remembrance. Place the Urim and Thummim in the breast piece of judgment. Now these were the, the, the Urim and Thummim are a communication device. In the breast piece of judgment, they will be over Aaron's heart when he enters the presence of God. In this way, Aaron will regularly carry the breast piece of judgment into the presence of God. Make the robe for the ephod entirely of blue with an opening for the head at the center and a hem on the edge so that it won't tear. For the edge of the skirts, make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet material all around and alternate them with bells of gold. Gold bell and pomegranate, gold bell and pomegranate all around the hem of the robe. Aaron has to wear it when he does his priestly work. The bells will be heard when he enters the holy place and comes into the presence of God, and again when he comes out so that he won't die. Make a plate of pure gold, engrave on it as on a seal, holy to God. Tie it with a blue cord to the front of the turban. It is to rest there on Aaron's forehead. He'll take on any guilt involved in the sacred offerings that the Israelites consecrate, no matter what they bring. It will always be on Aaron's forehead so that the offerings will be acceptable before God. Weave the tunic of fine linen, make the turban of fine linen, the sash will be the work of an embroiderer. Make tunics, sashes, and hats for Aaron's sons to express glory and beauty. Dress your brother Aaron and his sons in them, anoint, ordain, and consecrate them to serve me as priest. Make linen underwear to cover their nakedness from waist to thigh. Aaron and his sons must wear it whenever they enter the tent of meeting or approach the altar to minister in the holy place so that they won't incur guilt and die. This is a permanent rule for Aaron and all his priest descendants. All right, friends, chapter 29. This is the ceremony for consecrating them as priests. Take a young bull and two rams, healthy and without defects, using fine wheat flour but no yeast. Make bread and cakes mixed with oil and wafers spread with oil. Place them in a basket and carry them along with the bull and the two rams. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then take the vestments and dress Aaron in the tunic, the robe of the ephod, the ephod, and the breastpiece. Belting the ephod on him with the embroidered waistband, set the turban on his head and place the sacred crown on the turban. Then take the anointing oil and pour it out on his head, anointing him. Then bring his sons, put tunics on them and gird them with sashes, both Aaron and his sons, and set hats on them. Their priesthood is upheld by law and is permanent. This is how you will ordain Aaron and his sons, bring the bull to the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons will place their hands on the head of the bull, then you will slaughter the bull in the presence of God at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Take some of the bull's blood and smear it on the horns of the altar with your fingers, pour the rest of the blood on the base of the altar. Next, take all the fat that covers the innards, fat from among around the liver and the two kidneys, and burn it upon the altar. But the flesh of the bull, including its hide and dung, you will burn up outside the camp. It is an absolution offering. Then take one of the rams. Have Aaron and his sons place their hands on the head of the ram. Slaughter the ram and take its blood and throw it against the altar all around. Cut the ram into pieces, wash its innards and legs, then gather the pieces in its head and burn the whole ram on the altar. It is a whole burnt offering to God a pleasant fragrance and offering by fire to God. Then take the second ram. Have Aaron and his sons place their hands on the ram's head, 
slaughter the ram, take some of its blood and rub it on Aaron's right earlobe and on the right earlobes of his sons, on the thumbs of their right hands and on the big toes of their right feet. Sprinkle the rest of the blood against all sides of the altar, then take some of the blood that is on the altar. Mix it with some of the anointing oil and splash it on Aaron and his clothes and on his sons and their clothes, so that Aaron and his clothes and his sons and his son's clothes will be made holy. Take the fat from the ram, the fat tail, the fat that covers the innards, the long lobe of the liver, the two kidneys and the fat on them and the right thigh. This is the ordination ram. Also take one loaf of bread, one oil, of, one oil cake, and a wafer from the bread basket that is in the presence of God. Place all of these in the open hands of Aaron and his sons who will wave them before God, a wave offering. Then take them from their hands and burn them on the altar with the whole burnt offering, a pleasing fragrance before God, a gift to God. Now take the breast from Aaron's ordination ram and wave it before God, a wave offering. That will be your portion. Consecrate the wave offering, breast, and the thigh that was held up. These are the parts of the ordination ram that are for Aaron and his sons. Aaron and his sons are always to get this offering from the Israelites. The Israelites are to make this offering regularly from their peace offerings. Aaron's sacred garments are to be handed down to his descendants so they can be anointed and ordained in them. The son who succeeds him as a priest is to wear them for seven days and enter the tent of meeting to minister in the holy place. Take the ordination ram and boil the meat in the holy place at the entrance to the tent of meeting. Aaron and his sons will eat the boiled ram and the bread that is in the basket, atoned by these offerings, ordained and consecrated by them. They are the only ones who are to eat them. No outsiders are to eat them. They are holy. Anything from the ordination ram or from the bread that is left over until morning or from the bread that is left over until morning, you are to burn up. Don't eat it. It's holy. Do everything for the ordination of Aaron and his sons, exactly as I've commanded you throughout the seven days. Offer a bull as an absolution offering for atonement each day. Offer it on the altar when you make atonement for it. Anoint and consecrate it. Make atonement for the altar and consecrate it for seven days. The altar will become soaked in holiness. Anyone who so much as touches the altar will become holy. This is what you are to offer on the altar. Two-year-old lambs each and every day, one lamb in the morning and the second lamb at evening. With the sacrifice of the first lamb, offer two quarts of fine flour with a quart of virgin olive oil, plus a quart of wine for a drink offering. This sacrifice of the second lamb, the one at evening, is also to be accompanied by the same grain offering and drink offering of the morning sacrifice to give a pleasing fragrance, a gift to God. This is to be your regular, daily, whole burnt offering before God, generation after generation, sacrificed at the entrance of the tent meeting. That's where I'll meet you. That's where I'll speak with you. That's where I'll meet the Israelites at the place made holy by my glory. I'll make the tent of meeting and the altar holy. I'll make Aaron and his sons holy in order to serve me as priest. I'll move in and live with the Israelites. I'll be their God. They'll realize that I am their God who brought them out of the land of Egypt so that I could live with them. I am God, your God. All right, guys, let's get ready to get into chapter 30. Let's take a minute right here to talk about how appreciative we should be that we get to call home this the age of grace, right? That that we don't have to go through all of this to talk with God, to, to, to be accepted into the kingdom of God. Amen. I mean, really, let's take a minute to really think about how much of a blessing that is. We are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. They did not enjoy that luxury. Um... And it's also interesting to note the, the, the interplay, as always, between sin and blood and death, right? Sin, the atonement of sin requires blood. Our Savior has done that for us now. That was not the case then. And uh, the last point, this is a little bit off of this, but not exactly... Um, 
in my walk of faith being a born again believer I, I have come to many realizations but one that hits me all the time is you know before the fall in the garden there was no death there was no there were no carnivorous animals right and so sometimes i don't know about you guys but sometimes you watch a video and uh you know i've grown up on and around farms and hunting and all of this stuff so you know i'm, I'm fully aware of the the processes of death but sometimes I look at the hard scratch life that animals have, whether they're predators who may be starved to death from not finding prey, maybe they're prey who are being hunted by predators. All of that is because of us. All of that is because of the sin of Adam, the sin of humanity. That's what led to the fall. That's what led to the state of things now. I just think these things are interesting for us to stop and think about and to really help ingrain us with a, a deeper and more profound and more fleshed out gratitude towards God Almighty and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right, let's get into this last chapter, friends. The Altar of Incense, Chapter 30. Make an altar for burning incense, constructed from acacia wood, one and one half feet square and three feet high with its horns of one piece with it. Cover it with a veneer of pure gold, its top, sides, and horns, and make a gold molding around it with two rings of gold beneath the molding. Place the rings on the two opposing sides to serve as holders for poles by which it will be carried. Make the poles of acacia wood and cover them with a veneer of gold. Place the altar in front of the curtain that hides the chest of the testimony in front of the atonement cover that is over the testimony where I will meet you. Aaron will burn fragrant incense on it every morning when he polishes the lamps and again in the evening as he prepares the lamps for lighting so that there will always be incense burning before God generation after generation. But don't burn on this altar any unholy incense or whole burnt offering or, or grain offering. And don't pour out drink offerings on it. Once a year, Aaron is to purify the altar horns using the blood of the absolution offering of atonement. He is to make this atonement every year down through the generations. It is most holy to God. God spoke to Moses, when you take a head count of the Israelites to keep track of them, all must pay an atonement tax to God for their life at the time of being registered so that nothing bad will happen because of the registration. Everyone who gets counted is to give a half shekel using the standard sanctuary shekel of a fifth of an ounce to the shekel. A half shekel offering to God, everyone counted age 20 and up, is to make the offering to God. The rich are not to pay more, nor the poor pay less than the half shekel offering to God. See, that, that makes you realize how we're all in the same before God, right? He's not playing favorites there. Um... Take the atonement tax money from the Israelites and put it into the maintenance of the tent of meeting. It will be a memorial fund for the Israelites in honor of God making atonement for your lives. God spoke to Moses, make a bronze wash basin, make it with a bronze base. Place it between the tent of meeting and the altar, put water in it. Aaron and his sons will wash their hands and feet in it. When they enter the tent of meeting or approach the altar to serve there or offer gift offerings to God, they are to wash so they will not die. They are to wash their hands and their feet so they will not die. This is the rule forever for Aaron and his sons down through the generations. God spoke to Moses, take the best spices, 12 and a half pounds of liquid myrrh, half that much, six and a quarter pounds of fragrant cinnamon, six and a quarter pounds of fragrant cane, 12 and a half pounds of cassia, using the standard sanctuary weight for all of them, and a gallon of olive oil. Make these into a holy anointing oil, a perfumer's skillful blend. Use it to anoint the tent of meeting, the chest of the testimony, the table, and all its utensils, the lampstand and its utensils, the altar of incense, the altar of whole burnt offerings and all its utensils, and the wash basin and its base. Consecrate them so they'll be soaked in holiness, so that anyone who so much as touches them will become holy. Then anoint Aaron and his sons, consecrate them as priests to me. Tell the Israelites, this will be my holy anointing oil throughout your generations. Don't pour it on ordinary men. Don't copy this mixture to use for yourselves. It's holy. Keep it 
holy. Whoever mixes up anything like it or puts it on an ordinary person will be expelled. God spoke to Moses, take fragrance, spices, gum, resin, onchia, galbanum, and add pure frankincense. Mix the spices in equal proportions to make an aromatic incense, the art of a perfumer, salted and pure, holy. Now crush some of it into powder and place some of it before the testimony in the tent of meeting where I will meet with you. It will be for you the holiest of holy places. When you make this incense, you are not to copy the mixture for your own use. It's holy to God. Keep it that way. Whoever copies it for personal use will be excommunicated. All right, friends. Thank you guys so much for letting me share three more chapters of Exodus with you. We're making our way right through that book. Um, I can't wait to move on to the next with you, friends. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Three, three long format videos a week. Seven short videos every single week on this channel. Um, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, if you want to help the channel grow, then share this video wherever and however you can. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, prayer requests, witnesses, testimonies, anything you want to speak to the glory and goodness of God or your need as a believer or as someone looking into faith, drop that down in that comment section, friends. I love you all. Father God loves you even more. Whatever you're going to do, get out there and get it for God today. I will see you guys in that next video.